Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you on our uh, debate, uh, which is combined with a publication of uh, our report on how the medical errors uh, have been used to change uh, the abortion law in Ireland. My name is uh, Katarzyna Gęsiak. I'm a director of the Center for uh, Medical Law and Bioethics of Ordo Juris Institute. Um, our report is now available uh, on our website, or, uh, or the Juris Institute website. Uh, and today uh, we have uh, invited a, a group of expert, experts in the field of medicine and Irish law. Uh, these experts are Professor Patricia Casey, Professor of Psychiatry at University College Dublin and Psychiatrist Consultant at Mat Mater Misericordia University Hospital in Dublin. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Patrick Buckley, a solicitor, spe specialist in the area of medical negligence law, member of Association Against Medical Accidents and the Medical Injuries Alliance. Welcome. Um, Professor Bogdan Hazan, uh, obstetrician gynecologist, former national consultant in the field of gynecology and obstetrics, medical director of Mater Care International and vice president of the European Federation of Catholic Doctors Associations. Thanks, thanks to all of you for being with us today. Uh, we will, today we will discuss a problem of a pregnant mother's deaths. Uh, which uh, recently happened in, the Pol in Polish hospitals uh, in Pszczyna town and Częstochowa town. Um, these two trage tragedies have been made familiar uh, to, I believe, the, the whole of Polish society uh, by pro-abortion activists who claim that these situations uh, are the, the consequences of the Polish Constitutional Tribunal judgment that was given in October uh, 2020 and which banned uh, the eugenic abortion in Poland. Uh, in fact, these cases had nothing in common with the Polish Constitutional Tribunal, uh, since our binding law uh, still provides the possibility to, and even the legal duty uh, to save mother's life, even if a medical interve intervention may cause the unintended death of a child. What is especially stri striking in these matters is the similarity between these two situations in Pszczyna town and Częstochowa town, uh, uh, the similarity with the uh, passing of the Irish uh, pregnant mother, uh, Mrs. Savita Halapanavar, uh, who died in 2012 in Irish uh, hospital. And the, her death led, uh, led to uh, significant changes in the abortion law in Ireland. The Irish law binding in that date was interpreted as a major uh, factor of her death, was interpreted as in that manner that uh, there wasn't a possibility to save her life uh, until uh, her, her baby stayed alive. So um, what's important, the health service executive, which investigated the case, found a serious negligence in the medical care of the patient, which led to her death. Although a septic miscarriage of Mrs. Hala Panavar was not treated properly in the hospital and medical staff wrongly interpreted the, law, the Irish law and as the consequence, Ireland changed its law and legalized the abortion in 2018. And now I would like our discussion, I would like to start from the uh, legal aspects of, of this situation. So the first question I would like to ask to uh, Mr. Uh, Buckley. Uh, on the grounds on the Irish law in 2012, was it really impossible to save the pregnant mother's life? What was the meaning of the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution Act? Yes, indeed, I did. Uh, okay, so welcome. Uh, my, my answer is, is no, it was not impossible. The actual wording of the Eighth Amendment 
recognized both the right to life of the unborn baby and the right to life of the mother as being equal. Uh, the actual wording of the of the amendment was that the state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn child and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as practical by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. Uh, the, the tragic loss of Mrs. Halepanaver's life did not result from Ireland's pro-life laws. Doctors were always obliged to intervene to save the life of a mother, even if there was a risk that the medical treatment could result in the unintentional death of a baby. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, so uh, uh, what was what was the real problem? If the if there was a legal possibility of uh, saving mother's life, as you said, as you said. Uh, independently of the of the the same protection that was given to the to the child's life um, what was what was the real problem what do you find a real problem was it a misinterpretation of law what is uh, or some another problems with uh, another uh, legal problems uh, problems with legal provisions uh, wh what is your op your opinion on, on on that topic well the pro abortion uh, uh, organizations and media claimed that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, refused an abortion. However, uh, that was subsequently the medical council uh, actually um, um, said. Uh, Sorry, I'm begging your pardon. The autopsy showed mm -hmm. that her death was caused by uh, by E. coli ESBL, and her death was uh, declared as being misadventure. Um, in fact, the health authority, HICWA, uh, pointed to the failure of the hospital to act in a timely manner, uh, and that that was the cause of her death. Uh, it, it's actually, it was actually abundantly clear from the HICWA report uh, that it was never really about abortion mm -hmm. at all, but basic deficiencies in patient care in the hospital. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, okay, thank you very much. So it seems like it, it was a, a kind of uh, misinterpretation of, of law. So I can see that uh, probably the, 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 the same problem we, have, uh, we had in, in Poland where the pro-abortion or activist organizations try to convince our society uh, that this is the problem of law and the law is somehow guilty uh, of these uh, deaths that, that happened. And uh, which is of course not true and, and uh, our Polish law is still uh, make it, in making this possible to, to, to save mother's, mother's life. It, it's even, as I said, it's a, it's a legal duty to, uh, to do it. Um, okay, so uh, m Mr. Barkley, Barkley, uh, Barkley uh, thank you very much for, for, your, for your answers. Um, now I would like to, uh, to uh, go to uh, medical aspects of, of these uh, situations. And um, <coughs> Uh, as we know, uh, these tragic uh, deaths in Ireland and Poland uh, caused uh, justified objection among uh, the society. Uh, I believe that the majority of, of Ireland, Ireland's and Polish society just uh, is simply uh, doesn't, do not uh, accept uh, the situation in which a young, uh, healthy woman dies, uh, although she could have been saved. Uh, however, uh, what we could have seen in Poland was an increase in pro-abortion um, modes, uh, which were fueled by uh, pro-abortion uh, organizations. It looks, uh, for me, it looks like a kind of strategy. Although mother's deaths should not be linked to abortion law, but rather medical negligence, they artificially are, in order to create a general acceptance for abortion among the society. So, uh, Professor uh, Casey, uh, would you please comment on, on that te thesis? Uh, how such strategy, from the psychological point of view, could influence society in order to limit the legal protection of unborn children? 
Well, it's it's a strategy as old as time that people will use a particular difficult situation to make their own point and to try and get a law changed uh, in support of that. And that ended with Savita Hanapanavar, sadly. Interestingly, at one point, her husband said he did not want his wife's case turned into a political football. But that is what happened. And there had been a case a few years earlier where another mother lost her life in similar circumstances, simply because the diagnosis of sepsis was missed. But there was no outcry about that. At the time that Savita Hanapanavar died um, tragically, um, abortion had already been introduced into Ireland where there was a, substan a real and substantial the life of the mother, particularly in the case of suicide. And that law had been enacted in 2013. So the, the, the country had been softened up, as it were. Abortion in certain circumstances was accepted. Um, and in cases where neither the mother nor the baby were physically ill because they had introduced abortion on the grounds of suicide risk. Um, and so that set the scene. The country was then led to believe that if if we we did not have the law that we had a lady who had sepsis but it wasn't diagnosed but that this lady could have had could have had an abortion if our laws weren't as they were the problem was that somebody said um in the course of discussions with her husband when he asked for an early delivery of the baby or a, an early termination of the pregnancy um, was told um, this is a Catholic country, and somebody did say that, and that gave them gave the pro-choice lobby, the pro-abortion lobby, um, uh, fodder to say that Catholicism and our laws are being used um, even when women's lives are at risk. And once that happened, um, the the, um, the 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 you know the attitudes changed. And then other hard cases were introduced. Um, the cases of babies who have life limiting conditions were introduced as hard cases that could not uh, be, be um, have their lives ended so that people had to go through the tragedy of that. And a lot of um, celebrities came out in favor of abortion in those circumstances. People like Liam Neeson did um, a, um, a gothic horror type video um, in relation to um, abortion laws in Ireland and in particular abortion where um, the, the life of the, the baby might be foreshortened after birth. Um, the, the, the media were always in favour of it anyway. So once the hard cases, the death of a woman in the context of which she, her husband had been told that she could not have an abortion because Ireland was a Catholic country, um, followed by all of these celebrities um, meant that the um, referendum was, was bound to be, to be carried. And then on top of that, um, the social media um, re restricted um, access of the pro-life organizations to, a so to social media platforms. So the, the whole thing um, unfolded. The government then introduced a law that was very liberal, saying it would be um, rare, um, etc. And we now know from the recent reports, or two reports that have occurred, um, since the abortion law was enacted, that it is not rare and the numbers have gone up. They have become higher than they ever were, even when people were going to England. There were 7,000, more than 7,000 um, abortions, um, sorry, 6,966 abortions um, in the last two years in Ireland. And that, that's really extremely high. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it all looks like 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 a strategy, as as you said, 
uh, which involves uh, in, uh, the um, actors or the um, celebrities and, and um, uh, mass media and social media. And um, what, you, what you said uh, also uh, was very interesting that uh, sometime uh, before the situation with Mrs. Halapanavar uh, happened, uh, you, you had in Ireland the similar, uh, the, the similar situation uh, of the death of a mother, which, which wasn't so publicized like, like the situation with, uh, like the, uh, the death of uh, Mrs. Hala Panavars. So uh, this is this is very interesting, interesting um, problem. And uh, now I would like to um, address my next question to uh, Professor Hazan. Uh, because we know that in September 2012, over 1,000 representatives of medical professions, including professors, doctors, midwives, signed so-called uh, Dublin Declaration. Would you tell us what exactly was declared by, by signatories of this document in the context of abortion? Thank you, Mrs. Genshev. Uh, but uh, f at, the f at, the f at first, uh, please allow me to, uh, for a few words, about the background of the Dublin Declaration. Yes, uh, Ever since Roe and Wade in the United States, uh, the, term in, the term medical necessary abortion was accepted as an objective standard of medical care based on medical judgment. Uh, the cases of pre-existing heart diseases, renal insufficiency, pulmonary hypertension, uncontrolled diabetes, cancer, were recommended as, a, as maternal reasons for abortion. Also some severe pregnancy complications as preeclampsia, chorionamnonitis, or ectopic pregnancies were also, also included. According to pro-life approach, the goal of medical interventions should always be to save life. It is never uh, to uh, purposefully end the life of the fetus. Sometimes, however, the fetus may die as a result of interventions performed to save the mother's life. This concept is called the moral principle of double effect. A good action is done that has a forcing bad side effects. The Dublin Declaration on Maternal Health Care is partially based on this moral premise. It was written, as you said, in 2012 during the symposium organized by the Committee for Excellence in Maternal Health Care, chaired by Professor Imon Odruwire and Shuet in September the 8th, 2012. I met uh, Professor Dwyer several times at the, the conferences organized by Matterker International in Rome. The spokesman on, of the group underlined uh, that the, this event was not linked in any way to the pro-life campaign on any other organ organization. Uh, he said, that all organizers were involved in their professional capacity and were not here, there, to represent any pro-life position. Uh, about 140 medical professionals participated at this event, including expert, uh, experts in obstetrics and gynecology. The declaration was then signed by over 1,000 Irish obstetrician gynecologists and either and other health care workers. It is said that direct abortion, the purposeful destruction of the unborn child, is not medically necessary to save the life of a woman. The authors uphold that there is a fundamental difference between abortion and the necessary medical treatments that are carried out to save the life of the mother, even if such treatment results in the loss of life of her unborn child. They added the, uh, that uh, as experienced practitioners and researchers in obstetrics and gynecology 
They affirm that direct abortion is not medically necessary to save the life of, of woman, of mother. They confirm that the prohibition of abortion does not affect in any way the availability of optimal care to pregnant women. In, in, at the end, they said that it was that no treatment should ever be should ever be withheld from a woman if she needed to save her life, even if the treatment results resulted in the loss of life of her unborn unborn child. Uh, on the other hand, usually uh, the proper diagnosis and treatment of medical problems exacerbated during pregnancy prevents threats to the mother health and, and life. The treatment, for, for example, of the cancer sometimes can be delayed to the point when the fetus reaches the viability outside the mother's womb after delivery. Some mothers also decide to give their leaves, to sacrifice their leaves lives to save their babies. In some serious complication of early pregnancy, like preeclampsia, eclampsia or chorionamnonitis, as it was in Ireland and in Polish cases, when in intensive treatment doesn't improve the mother's health and the danger of medical de death became real, the labor must, must be induced or cesarean section performed regardless of the child's chance to survive outside the mother womb. The death of the child was not directly caused and this treatment cannot be called as abortion. The, the intent was to save the mother through the procedure, procedure of induced delivery, though the, the child was not expected to survive due to prema prematurity. I would like also add that apart from Dublin Declaration, there were similar statements of other institutions. For example, American Association of Pro-Life Obstetrician Gynecologists. It was edited, the state there uh, edited the statement earlier, much early in July 2009. And they, um, in this statement, they said that abortion is that proposed full killing of the unborn in the, ter in the termination of pregnancy. But, when extreme medical emergencies that threaten the life of the mother arise, chorionamnonitis of HELP syndrome, uh, this uh, organize, American organization of pro-life doctors believes in treatment to save the mother's life, including premature delivery, if that is indicated, obviously with the patient informed consent. And this is not abortion to save the mother's life. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yes, this is, uh, you have mentioned very uh, important uh, distinction between abortion and medical intervention, medical treatment that which aim is to save mothers alive, uh, which uh, so this situation of saving mothers life is, uh, is never a, a situation that can be confused with abortion. Uh, abortion is a intended uh, uh, killing uh, of a baby uh, and it does not depend on mother's health it's it's really it's extremely uh, important such a uh, such a distinction uh, but uh, professor Hazan I would like to ask you uh, one more question and concerning the Dublin declaration uh, because today I mean after uh, mrs. Hala Panavar's uh, death in 2012 after the Irish referendum in uh, 2018, we, we do not hear about uh, this document, this Dublin Declaration. Uh, I, I tried to find it, but it's not even available. Its, it's website is not even available now. Uh, could you tell us what, what happened? Uh, what, uh, uh, why this initiative has been marginalized? It's not easy to, uh, to answer your, your question. We may only presume about the reasons of this, as you said, marginalizing or memory lapsing. Uh, the Dublin Declaration was not edited to any organization, to any institution. And uh, this is the, the probable reason of lacking any uh, uh, own website. 
the, this uh, event, the Dhabi de Declaration, was uh, welcomed uh, and uh, still is well known in some Latin American countries like Chile, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, or, or Honduras. Uh, but it is really not well recognized elsewhere. Uh, and what was the reason? After publishing the declaration, the declaration it was attacked by the abortion agenda in Western countries. And the others were accused uh, to keep abortion bans by undercutting arguments about the need to offer uh, so-called therapeutic and medical necessary abortion, and even provides moral camouflage for pro-life doctors who must occasionally end a pregnancy to save the endangered, endangered life of a pregnant woman. Uh, later, the declaration was fiercely attacked and accused for offering clinician, clinician uh, teachers justification to withhold life-saving medical care. Uh, after the death of uh, um, the lady, the Mrs. Savita Halapan Navar in Ireland with the septic miscarriage in October 2012, just one more. It, is, it has happened just one more after the Dublin Declaration publication. Uh, and abortion advocate, advocates in, in Ireland started the loudly urgent and brutal action uh, to change the Ireland's abortion law. For example, they claim that if Savita uh, has received, had received an abortion, then she would not develop a life-threatening condition. Uh, however, the, this Dublin Declaration was seated by the both sides of discussion. According to the to pro life group, the treatment of the patient according to the Dublin Declaration would save her life. Simultaneously, the reproductive rights supporters claimed that the death was a tragic repudiation of Dublin Declaration. Uh, the prohibition uh, agenda um, in Ireland temporarily won the battle on the abortion. Uh, it was probably one reason of the low awareness of its existence among professionals nowadays. Uh, I think that it's high time to recall this useful and wise conception. It really deserves a bigger, a way bigger attention, bigger attention as health professionals. It is, I think, the logical, uh, wise uh, conception, agree agreeable with the medical knowledge and the common sense, uh, and the withdrawal of abortion procedures and abortion agenda from obstetrical practice for the good of mother and children, their chi the health as well as for the freedom of patients as health care workers' conscien conscien cons conscience uh, would be welcome in the future, mm. I think. Okay, thank you. Yes, this is uh, very, uh, very um, interesting what you said that um, <coughs> Mrs. Halapanova's uh, tragic death in uh, Ireland happened just one mo month after a Dublin uh, declaration was, was signed. And what, what, what can we observe in Poland is um, the situation when in, uh, where in 2020, in October 2020, our Polish Constitutional Tribunal uh, gave its ruling, its judgment, uh, which banned the uh, eugenic abortion in Poland. Uh, the eugenic abortion, which was the, the most common uh, cause of um, abortion in Poland, and then after after a year we have um, a, a very a very loudly uh, uh, shown uh, um, situation of of mother's death in first in Pszczyna town and then in Częstochowa town uh, so uh, we i believe that it is, this is just not uh, um, i think that this was it is it was directed it was planned so, somehow what, what what can i say this is this is my opinion but it looks really like 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 a st strategy of pro abortion agenda um so i would like um 
to address my uh, next question to Professor Casey, that would be the, the question uh, touching uh, another uh, problem, but still related to, to the one we are talking about. After the judgment of our constitutional tribunal, which banned the eugenic abortion in Poland, uh, we can observe another attempt to create a new precedent of abortion justified by mother's uh, psychiatric problems, for example, depression. On the other hand, according to Polish national consultant in the field of psychiatry, depression, I would quote now, depression is pre in pregnancy can and should be normally treated. What is your as, your, as a psychiatrist, opinion on this problem? Well, my, my opinion on it isn't just my opinion, it's what the research shows. And the research shows that there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that abortion prevents depression or that abortion is a treatment for depression. The, the, the medical royal colleges in London wrote a systematic review in, I think it was 2011, where they examined that question and they found no advantage uh, for, um, on the woman's mental health when uh, an unwanted pregnancy was ended by abortion by comparison with the woman giving birth to the baby. So there was an absolutely no advantage whatsoever. The outcome was the same in terms of their mental health. What also found was that if the person did have a prior history of depression, their risk of depression post-abortion was raised. So if somebody has a history of depression and it might be suggested to them, and I know it sometimes is suggested, you know, you're pregnant, it's you, you don't really want to be, it's going to put a lot of pressure on you, would you think about termination? Would you think about an abortion? And people I know have told me that has been suggested to them, when in fact what would happen if they went through with the abortion, they would be at increased risk of getting depressed. So the, the scientific literature is quite clear on this, um, that abortion for an unwanted pregnancy um, in a way, um, does not reduce the risk of depression. And if she has a prior history, it may increase the risk. Depression can be at any time pregnancy. Um, there, there isn't a difficulty about treating depression in pregnancy. One has to be careful in the first trimester with the medications that are used. And sometimes one would not use medication in the first trimester of pregnancy. One would use cognitive therapy and other approaches, talking therapies. But, but after the first trimester, antidepressants can be used um, and, and are used um, and you know there there is is not an issue about about that um so again this is what we call the thin end of the wedge using difficult cases and misinterpreting and mis prevent pre presenting misleading information in order to soften up public opinion okay uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Casey. That was a very interesting point of, of view. Um, uh, I would like to um, add uh, just uh, one additional uh, question I uh, didn't want to, to ask, but now I think I, I would just uh, um, would like to hear a, a one more explanation from uh, Mr. Buckley. Um, uh, as I, as I know, um, in the report of health service uh, executive, um, there, was, there were, uh, as I remember, seven recommendations what to do in order to um, improve uh, the care of pregnant mothers. And only one from these seven uh, recommendations was related to the change of the law. However, I didn't find in a report, in this report, um, um, a kind of um, details what, what kind of uh, changement in, in law it should be. 
Uh, am I right? I think that uh, the um, health service executive didn't propose any any particular changes uh, to, to the law, to the Irish law. No, uh, they they didn't make any, uh, make any particular uh, recommendation. However, they were that what they really meant was uh, that the uh, the law in relation to abortion should be changed. Mm -hmm. I think that that was that was the underlying text that that was uh, that, that wasn't uh, ex expressed at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, th that's what I thought after reading the uh, the, the the report. Um, okay, so uh, I have no more question prepared for 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 our guests. Uh, so I would like to thank you very very much for your very interesting and very important voices uh, in that matter. Um, in, in the end, uh, I would like to uh, thank you also to all uh, mm, participants who are hearing, who are, who, are, who are listening to our debate. Uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, everybody who is interested in that uh, matter to, uh, to read our, our report, uh, which is uh, now available on our website. It's, it's in a digital um, version, of course. And um, thank you very much one more time uh, for your time and for your, for your uh, speeches. Um, and um, see you soon, I hope. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.